Hello everyone, this is Josh from Monroe County Public Library, and I'm here to talk to you today about another digital creativity home software that you can use for free. This time it's a web app called PySchool. It's available from www.pyschoolapp.com, and you can use this to do pixel art. So if you're familiar with things like Super Mario Brothers, or something as new as Stardew Valley, you know that you can use pixel art to create a lot of different effects with you know more or less depth to it, uh, just like any other art format. So you can reference this character walking sprite here, and you'll have an idea for the kinds of things that you can create. And this can be used for just general art. You can export this for use in a game. So if you're wanting to create 2D art for Unity or Godot or something like that, you can do it right in this app. So this is a web version, that's what I'm going to be using, but you can also download and install it on Windows, Mac, and Linux. So there's the Downloads button here. And if you don't have access to the internet all the time, this might be a good option for you. But today I'm going to use the web app because it has all the same functionality and it's just convenient for me. It does have this warning here where it tells you the accounts are going to be shut down. It has nothing to do with the app itself. It just used to be able to save your art into the cloud which they don't support any longer. So it might be just like a development issue or a money issue or, or whatever. I'm not quite sure, but they don't support that any longer. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and create a sprite. And we have our default view here. And on this default view, we have our drawing area. We have our frames. And over here, we have a preview panel of what we're drawing. So if I start drawing here, by default, we're on the drawing tool. You can see that it makes a shape and we can preview it right here. So if we wanted to export that, we can do single art or single frame art. Um, so you could add some detail to this, maybe create a lot of depth and, um, you know, export that for whatever you want to use it for. Today, I'm going to show you how to create an animation here because I think that that's very interesting, but you can do single frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and go and close that here. And then there's also things like the eraser tool. So you can erase, of course, you can resize your brush. And so let's say I want to erase more things in just one pixel at a time. I'll go over here. And you can see it's a bigger square now, so I'm getting rid of more things. I can also do something like, let's draw this, get the selection tool, and then hit delete, and hit enter, and now it's deleted. I can do shapes and things like that, change the color right here. And right down here is a very helpful thing, keyboard shortcuts. So you can see here that things like, Command Z, or Command Y are supported, so undo, redo. Uh, you can cut things, you can paste it. Short keys are always a good thing to review, so take a look at these. And let's take a look at this right-hand panel here. So I showed you earlier there's a preview button here. You can also change the frames per second if you're creating an animation, so that'll be helpful for visualizing what it's gonna look like when it's finished. There are layers, we're gonna be using those later. There are functionalities to flip things, uh, to clone things, and to align them over here. And those may or may not be useful for, for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work in a first layer here. And today I'm gonna show you how to draw a fire. And that's gonna be an animated image. So what we can do is start here and change our color here. I'm gonna get kind of a brownish color. And I think that I'm still on the selection tool. And go back into that first frame here. I can delete this other frame. And let's select my pencil tool and change our pixel size down to one again. And I can just draw a general shape outline. So let's draw that. Let's add some more detail. So then we get a different shade here and maybe add some detail with that. Let's get something a little bit different, kind of similar. So let's do something darker. There we go. It's starting to look like wood now. And let's just make a little uh, branch coming off it right up here. So I'm going to call that my, my uh, log here that we're going to use to make our fire. And let's go ahead and fill in these last little things here. Uh, there we go. So this is our log here. And you can do uh, variations by adding a frame. So if I had this, this frame here, you know, you can draw, of course, I'm on my paint bucket tool. You can draw a different shape here. 
and then go into your preview and you can see that it's differentiating between the first and the second image, which is not super great. Um, drawing like that is going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort. Uh, so we're going to use layers here. I'm going to add a new layer uh, here in just a second. What I want to do first is duplicate the layer. So I'm going to make this about five frames long. And because of that, it copies the same frame in five different areas here. And that'll be helpful to use it as a base for adding the fire. And one of the nice features is once you use that to create the duplicate frames, you can add a layer here. And once you're on the layer, you can actually see that it's created corresponding frames for the different layer. So now I don't have to manually recreate all of those. And you know, now we're gonna create uh, our fire here. So our first thing is gonna be getting a, let's do a red color. And you can see right here that the colors I've picked in the past are in this swatch here. So if you need to access those again later, right there it's pretty handy so let's go ahead and add some red it's like red seems like it's going to be in the middle here of the fire where it's a little bit hotter i'm going to add a little bit of sparks there get some yellow you can be you know as careful with this as you want um i'm just going to have like kind of an interesting effect here with not a lot of regularity and you know, it's just gonna be kind of a quick effect here. So I can go to the next frame now, and let's, no, let's use the colors that we've saved in our swatch. So now we have yellow here. So I'm gonna just add some yellow, let's get some red, and I think we have an orange color here. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to the next frame. And what I can do actually is if I duplicate this frame here and note that that does add another frame, which will duplicate it on layer one because it creates a corresponding layer. But if I duplicate it and we can remove this extra layer now, I can actually like flip it. It's going to look a little bit different than the frame before it because it's, it's kind of a mirrored effect. So you don't have to create entirely new effects all the time. You can flip it, you can rotate it and things like that. And that might make it look a little bit different. So I'm going to actually do that again here. And I'm going to move this a little bit later. Delete the extra frame. And you know what? Let's go ahead and look at this as it exists as a four frame image in our preview here. Now you can see that the fire is animating here on the log. So we have the fire layer over the log layer. So that's not getting changed here. And we have this nice little fire effect. You can use the FPS counter here to slow it down. So maybe if I feel like this is too slow, I can speed it up. And you can see it faster here. And then let's slow it down to something like two frames per second. And it's nice little slow burning fire here. You probably want it to be, I don't know, like, who knows, six frames per second, let's say. And that's our fire. So we can go ahead and export that now as a GIF or a, P or a set of PNG images. Um, you can also export this for things like a video game. Like I said, you can use this in Unity or Godot. And those options are right here. So I'm going to go ahead and export. And in the PNG option is where you have uh, the option to save it as a sprite sheet. Or just you can do it just as a PNG as a single frame here. You can do a rendered GIF. And you can also get a zip image. Go ahead and just do the PNG or a sprite sheet that you could use in Unity or Godot. Let me open it up here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And you can see that we have our sprite sheet here. So this is pretty cool. Uh, you can go ahead and just, you know, bring that right into Unity and Godot and you'll have your rendered fire sprite here. You can do this with characters. You can do a lot of different things with this. And if you want to have the rendered GIF, you can just save that as well and have yourself a nice little art thing that you can share with friends or family. You also have the option to save this in your browser. It does save it in the local cache. So if you do something like clear your cookies, clear your cache, it's gonna delete your work. I would probably save to a sprite sheet or as the PySchool format. There's a .PySchool formats and you can import that back into this and it's gonna keep the things like layer data, your FPS and all the art that you've created. So you'll have access to that in the future. So with that, um, I think you have a good start for creating some nice pixel art. 
go out there and create some and share it with us. With that, we'll see you in the next one.